Hello everyone, my name is Eugene and I'm the Mechatronics Application Specialist in CAD Microsolutions. I will be introducing you to the Zucan E3 environment in this video. Zucan E3 is a project-based solution. So when I open this water cooling pump project, we will draw or pull in all the necessary documents which are attached to this project. Workspace configuration and settings which can be saved and reloaded according to users or specifications will help save time in ensuring company standards are met while allowing flexibility in terms of graphical user interface. As I mentioned earlier, this project consists of all its embedded documents, including externally referenced documents in formats like PDF, Excel, or Word. This topology document was excerpted from an AutoCAD DXF drawing. Zucan E3 comes with various importers and exporters, which allows migration from legacy software seamless and also generation of native files to customers or manufacturers. You can also attach hyperlinks on the topology document itself, linking it to the actual schematic symbol. So I will now bring up the panel drawing. Zucan E3 is also a component-based engineering tool. Every component placed in its project is made up of its electrical and schematic and fluid schematic symbols as well as panel symbols. As an example, you can automatically jump from a component, say Q1, in the panel drawing to its associated schematic symbol. So if you change the designator in the panel drawing from Q1 to Q100, it will automatically be reflected in the schematic drawing as well. Zucan E3 also allows the standard window shortcuts such as copy and paste. If the Q100 is copied and paste, the software would know to create a new designator which is Q100 to avoid duplicate designators. The Q101 component brings in three symbols to be placed in the project, the device table, the blue symbol indicates that it has been placed, while the yellow symbol indicates that it has not been placed. We will now also place Q101's corresponding panel symbol. As you can see, because of the mid reference, it will only allow me to place on the DIN rail. Now that everything is almost at its appropriate location, we can then invoke the panel auto-connect. Using this auto routing tool, the wires will be generated based on the schematic drawings made earlier. The wires that are generated are based on the schematic drawings, including its cross section diameter as well as its color. So, we, once again, we can invoke the jump tool to jump the schematic from the panel drawing. Let's now bring up two types of schematic drawings, one being the fluid drawing and the electrical drawing. So the fluid drawing is on the right and the electrical drawing is on the left. We'll now zoom in to see the picture clearer. If you bring in a component, say a valve, which has both electrical and fluid symbols, it will change accordingly based on which sheet we hover the mouse onto. So this is, once again, due to the component-based engineering uh, platform which this software is based on. We will now search for terminals of X2, which has been placed in the schematics using the search command. It will bring up multiple instances of X2, as this block has multiple terminals. It will also accept wildcards in your search command.
From the schematic tool, we can jump to the device table. And from here, we will generate the terminal drawing or plan automatically based on the connections made previously. You can define the sheet format, table symbol, sorting method, and jumper specifications. Generation of the terminal drawings will then be a matter of a single click. If you see closely, it will include the jumper symbols as well as the color codes of the connections. You can also bring them into a folder structure as well to make things clearer. Now let's move on to generate a cable plan, which is tremendously useful, especially for cable assemblies. We will specify the sheet format that we want to use. And we can also rename the drawing as well to cable plan, W1. We will search for the cable name W1. using the search command once again. So now that we have seen the cable connections of W1, we can now place the cable plan of it. So the two 10 pin connectors which W1 connects from one end to another will be placed onto this sheet. We can use the rotation command to rotate it if necessary. A label can then be placed onto this connection showing the cable name as well as its associated cords. You can also take a look at its cross-section diagram as well as its diameter. So here, there's an 8-core um, cable named W1. The corresponding individual core connection table can also be placed as well. The rat's nest simply shows that there's a connection between these cores. You can disable it if you wish to do that as well. Lastly, we can generate reports such as bill of material. Once again, it's just a matter of a single click. You can definitely change the column view by using your own table template as well if necessary. You can choose how the columns are sorted as well. Besides that, you can also generate the connection list as well as cable list. Okay, the connection list will come in with all the parameters which has been defined earlier on in the schematic drawings. The length of the cable will be updated based on the panel drawing. Since I did not place any of the cables onto the panel drawing previously, it will not appear here. Besides that, you can also export these reports in Excel or Access formats. I will now show you how you can also utilize variants or options in this software. Let's bring up a panel drawing to show this capability. I will zoom into these components which will appear or disappear according to the selection of variants of according to the selection of the variants or options. Alright, so thank you very much for viewing this video. Thank you. Bye-bye.